Steve Fascio is searching for amphibians and invertebrates at a vernal pool in Vermont. These pools are small, isolated wetlands that often dry up during the hot weather. They're home to a variety of frogs, salamanders, dragonflies, and other wildlife. Even in early November, there's still some life in this one. So that's a fingernail clam. It uh, doesn't get much bigger than that. And um, these are not unique to vernal pools, but they're one way uh, we can confirm that, uh, in, especially in the fall when there's, when there's no other amphibian life here, we can uh, confirm that it's, that it's a vernal pool. Fascio, along with researchers from the nearby University of New Hampshire, will soon release a report showing young amphibians living in these pools have high levels of toxic methyl mercury in their bodies. The mercury from coal-fired power plants and incinerators travels on weather systems and is deposited as rain or snow. Eventually, the inorganic mercury converts to toxic methyl mercury. Researchers say these small ponds become hotspots for the chemical element. Um, the methylation occurs in certain conditions. You have to have fairly low oxygen levels um, and you need these sulfate reducing bacteria that uh, convert the inorganic mercury to methyl mercury and then it can be taken up by the biota. The study checked the mercury levels in two amphibian species, wood frogs and spotted salamanders, in six vernal ponds in Vermont. The results, the eggs had fairly low levels of mercury. The larva, the mercury was three to four orders of magnitude greater than the egg. So they were uptaking um, mercury very rapidly, particularly the spotted salamanders. They were, um, they were in the um, somewhere between two and 400 nanograms per gram, which is, which is fairly high. The study also found mercury levels dropped in the adult salamanders sampled. Because of dilution, they're no longer feeding in this mercury rich environment of the vernal pool and they're out in the terrestrial system where the mercury levels are probably quite a bit lower and their prey probably have lower mercury levels. So they're just not getting as much in their system. It's hard for an organism, once they have mercury, it's hard for them to get rid of it. Fazio says there's little information available on the impact of mercury on the amphibian. You know, mercury is a neurotoxin. The first sort of the low level effects are, are behavioral changes that you might not even you wouldn't even notice. Researchers also say the mercury carried by the amphibians eventually gets taken up by other wildlife. So anything that's eating those larvae or those little metamorphs that are coming out of the pools that have high mercury levels, we suspect they have high mercury levels, um, would get a pretty good dose. And if they're focusing on eating those you know, um, over and over, whatever's eating them is gonna get a pretty high dose of mercury and some of the some of the main predators would be things like garter snakes, mink. This vernal pool is fed by surface water and is isolated. Other pools are at the headwaters for tributaries that flow into streams and rivers. There are some pools that do have that groundwater connection and are kind of headwater headwater seeps really that that um, function as vernal pools in the same way and so for those type of systems sure there would definitely be a downstream uh, effect because it seems like these vernal pools are very effective at, at, uh, at methylating mercury.